we're going to see how to get Nginx into production by improving Nginx's not so great default configuration. Now there's two places the Nginx configuration falls flat and that is caching, in other words, uh, performance stuff, and two, security. There's really no security uh, kind of at all in Nginx by default, so it's up to us to add that in. We're gonna see how to fix that in Nginx super easily, but first, let's actually see what's wrong. We're gonna see some examples of issues. I'm here in an Ubuntu server. Inside of the server, Nginx is running. Nginx here has a uh, completely vanilla configuration just to serve a PHP application. In this case, it's Laravel, right? So for any request that comes in, requesting a PHP file, it's gonna pass that off to PHP FPM, just as you would for any PHP application. So let's go ahead and see some things that need improving. First is the homepage, the actual web page we're loading here. It's actually fine. I think the only thing I wanna point out here is that it's giving the server information away. So the version of Nginx and the Linux version that is being used uh, underneath here, you don't really wanna give that information away. And actually there's security headers that should be pretty standard here that are missing. So let's see those in a bit. Next, we move on to static assets. Laravel has a cache busting mechanism for static assets. So uh, our CSS, JS files, all that stuff gets a new file name every time the file has changed, which is great. Uh, what we see here is that Nginx is not returning any cache control headers for static assets. So our browser cannot necessarily take advantage of caching as we would want it to. Okay, a little bit more worrisome, not too bad, but a little bit is that our website can be pulled in from other sites through an iframe. Now, some standard security headers prevent this, and the fact that Nginx is missing that isn't like an issue, but it's just indicative that Nginx doesn't do this for you, right? It's something that we should do. Now, a little more egregiously is that the default configuration isn't blocking access to any files that it should block access to. So if I go to some app.xyz, which by the way, is a domain name I bought for like two bucks just for this video, um, and this is pointing to that Nginx server I showed you. So some app.xyz slash uh, .ht access, HD access is a file that comes in the web root of Laravel by default, and we can actually download that. I don't have a TLS certificate. We can actually download that, which is not great. Now, in addition to that, just like that, um, I have a backup.sql file in the web root here, and we can download that too. So there's really no thought into preventing um, access to files that should not be accessible publicly here. Okay, we're ready to actually fix this. Let's see what we're gonna do. We are gonna do uh, H5BP's Nginx configuration. So H5BP is HTML5 boilerplate, which has boilerplate stuff for HTML and all sorts of stuff, including Nginx. And the configuration here is great. It's really good. It's definitely production ready. It's uh, sourced by a large community, so it's solid. What we can do here is actually clone this repository. And in cloning it, we can actually blow away and replace the default Nginx configuration completely. Now that might sound kind of scary, but it's actually really easy. You can just back up your old configuration and bring in the configuration that you may have already had um, by default, which is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to do sudo move etsy nginx. I'm going to call it nginx.back. Then we're going to do sudo get to clone the repository here. And I'm going to clone it into the etsy nginx directory so we get it back there. And then do sudo service nginx uh, restart. I'm not going to reload or anything here. I'm going to restart completely because uh, when you completely blow away Nginx's files and bring them back, it's sometimes better to just do a full restart um, for just specific configuration reasons. Okay, so that's up and running. So sudo nginx-t, there's no issues with the configuration. Back in our browser, we'll see our site doesn't work anymore because we have to bring the configuration back. So let's bring that back and then we can see the improvements we have out of the box without any other changes. All right, so back in our server here, I want to sudo copy dash r etsy nginx dot back. Uh, I want anything that ends in fast CGI and the snippets directory. So this is stuff that in is included in the default Nginx installation that H5BP doesn't have that we want because we're hosting a PHP application and we have to pass a request off to PHP FPM, which is fast CGI. So we're just going to bring that back to the Etsy Nginx directory, and then we can create a configuration for our site. Now, H5BP's configurations want to be in the comp.d directory. Anything that ends in dot dot is, uh, or a period is not going to be loaded in. And anything that does not end, or sorry, anything does not begin with a period will get loaded if it ends in dot conf. So uh, by default, HIVP's no SSL default conf is what's being loaded here. And um, you know, that's just listening on port 80 and just returns an empty response, which is fine for now. We can just leave that. Okay, through the magic of editing, I brought back our old configuration into our new H5BP-based configuration, and we can check it out. I've tweaked like two things. Uh, we're listening on port 80, just like we were before. Everything here is all the same. It's passing off to fast CGI. 
Our snippets directory exists now in the H5BP directory because we copied them back. I have added this error page to say any 404 errors which should go to index.php to let our application handle that 404 error. And then we included h5bpbasic.conf. And uh, that's basically the only changes we need to do, right? We just bring our old configuration back, include the basic.conf from h5bp, and we get a lot of stuff for free. So let's do sudo service nginx. Well, actually, first, let's do sudo nginx-t to test the configuration. That's good. Nginx reload to reload that configuration, and we'll head back to our browser to see what we have improved. OK, so straight away, we can see that the website is loading again. Our configuration is back. Let's go here to our dashboard, uh, our main page, and we can see we have some new headers. Uh, first, server, it just says Nginx, no versioning, no Linux version, uh, no Linux OS. That's great. Uh, we have a referrer policy to give less information um, from the referrer headers. Uh, X content type options, no sniff, to prevent browsers from trying to sniff out content types of files. And X frame options deny to prevent iframes from loading the content, right? So this no longer is allowed to load it. Chrome sees that header and says, oh, this website prefers I don't load it through an iframe. We're not going to do that. Perhaps more importantly, our uh, HD access file is no longer accessible. Our backup.sql file also no longer accessible. If I actually put this in correctly, it keeps trying to do SSL on me. Also inaccessible, right? So great. We have a much better security posture now. We also have a few benefits. but. Real quick, I just want to show you uh, the H5BP configuration so you know what's going on. Now, the uh, thing we saw loaded was that basic.conf file, and that is in here in the H5BP directory, just basic.conf. This loads some other files. Anytime you see include here, it's going to be relative to the Etsy Nginx directory. So that's why our includes say H5BP security referrer policy. This is all inside of the Etsy Nginx directory now. Let's actually see that in the server. Uh, we'll list out Etsy Nginx. We have the H5BP directory, right? OK, so that includes three security things, a location block and a cross-origin block. This is our referrer policy we saw, the content type options, the X-frame options. We saw those three security headers. This is the location block that prevents access to certain files, dot files, uh, dot SQL files, PDF files, all sorts of stuff, and uh, does allow access to the well-known directory, which is a dot directory as well, but is required for things like let's encrypt and search bot to um, confirm you own the server, have ownership of the domain you're trying to create a certificate for. I'm going to do a separate video about using CertBot to create SSL certificates, so keep your eyes peeled for that. That is what the basic.conf file loads. You can check out all the other stuff. There's more in here for you for you to look at. There's a TLS configuration. There's more so location um, items you can add. And location is just like a location block, right? See, location, great. And uh, there's more security headers in here. So if you need things like CSPs, content uh, security policy headers, you can check out here for some defaults that are useful. OK, so what are the benefits of this? Well, we just really quickly got our Nginx up to speed production grade, right? There is all sorts of configuration you can explore in here. It does better like gzip compression. It has all sorts of configurations configured for you that you can optionally use. It does a better job of our default security posture, adding in headers that are you know, useful for security and uh, preventing access to files that sh should not be accessible publicly, and all sorts of configuration for you to check out and add it in as you need. So I'm going to be doing some more Nginx videos. Please keep an eye out. I specifically am going to do some videos on setting up CertBot for uh, Let's Encrypt certificates for plain domains, for wildcard domains, and then also some videos in the future coming up about setting up Nginx so you can use it for multi-tenant apps. In other words, give every one of your customers or users or whatever their own subdomain for your application.